Hi, my name is Sid and I'm an architect here at Palantir. We recently launched an effort for the developer community to get their hands on their own Palantir AIP instance. Sign up at build.palantir.com. One of the first things that folks like to do when they get access to their Palantir instance is to connect it to their data sources. So in this video, I'm going to play the role of a data engineer to show you how easy it is to connect one of the most commonly used ERP systems, SAP, to AIP. So let's begin. On logging in, I'm greeted with the AIP landing page, which has a bunch of different applications. To connect to my SAP system, I'm going to navigate to the data connection application. Here, I'm presented with hundreds of out-of-the-box connectors to various hyperscalers like Azure, AWS, GCP, among others. I can also access out-of-the-box connectors for a wide variety of ERP and CRM systems. I can even connect to custom sources that support many protocols like FTP, REST APIs, and JDBC. I'm going to search for SAP, and I can see that I have the option of connecting to so many different types of SAP systems. In this demo, I'm going to connect to the traditional SAP ERP system, but you're free to try this with the system that you have access to. On popping open the SAP ERP connector, I'm presented with a guided form that allows me to configure the parameters needed to talk to my SAP system. Here, I have the optionality to talk to my source directly over the internet or via an agent that is co-located in the same network as the SAP source. Since my SAP system is in a private network, I'm going to use an agent to talk to it. I'm going to now choose the agent that I have pre-configured here and define the URL for the SAP source. Over the course of our engagement with hundreds of enterprise customers, we have seen many different types of authentication parameters being used, and we've provided essentially options to facilitate connection via any of them. For my SAP source, I'm going to choose a basic username password type authentication I can also see that there are a few advanced options that we've provided for things like serialization strategy, among others. Awesome. Instead of allowing the system to choose where within the project we selected earlier, the SAP table should land, I'm going to choose the location that conforms with the choice of my directory structure. Now that I've done that, I want to take a moment to show you that AIP can not only read from these data sources, but can also be configured to enable write back to them. This is important because key decisions made within AIP can now be synced upstream or downstream to different sources that may rely on it. Cool. Within just a few minutes, we were able to configure a live data connection to our SAP source. Now let's explore and see what exists within. Awesome. Now that we're connected to our SAP source, I can see that the connector has pre-categorized the data that exists by different business modules and even different workflow types. For example, I can see the MM tables like the materials, inventory, and vendors. I can see the FI tables that are related to financial accounting, among others. One more thing to call out here is that the German acronyms like MARA and Market are also parsed out for me by this certified connector. I'm going to add these tables to the graph to visualize their schemas and the relationships between them. I've done all of this without pulling any data into the platform, that is by putting minimal pressure on the source system. And now, in a very shopping cart-like fashion, I can choose to sync them into my project. In the configuration for the individual syncs, I realize that for every data set, I have the optionality to bring it in as a full snapshot 
or in a pen transaction which is purely additive in nature or even an update style transaction. In case I choose to append this data, the connector knows that these are the incremental columns that will determine whether a row is a net new addition to the current table. What I'm trying to say here is that AIP allows me to configure this sync in a way that's optimal by choosing to only bring in new rows versus a full snapshot of data every time. I'm now going to create the sync and then I'm going to open the sync and build the dataset option. Let's open the build details where it reports information about the data that's being built. As you can see, the dataset has now been built. I'm going to open this dataset and observe a preview of the rows that exist. On further investigating the lineage, I can see that this dataset is coming from our recently configured SAP source. And on further expanding the SAP source, I can see all the tables for which I had originally created the six. Amazing. To recap, within just a few minutes, we were not only able to connect to a live SAP system, but we were also able to visually inspect what are the tables that existed within, and we were able to only sync the tables that we needed for our workflow. Cool. A natural question that comes to mind is, after connecting to a data source, is there a way that I can just automatically bring in the tables that are needed for my workflow? Is there a way to instruct AIP to clean all of these tables and bring it in a state that are useful for end user analysis? AIP allows you to do exactly this via an offering called HyperAuto. HyperAuto is a product of decades of experience working with SAP customers that allow you to get from zero to one within just a few minutes. So let's dive right in. In HyperAuto, I'm going to select the SAP source that I just configured. After specifying whether I want to either pull data in batch or streaming mode, it supports both, and configuring the type of SAP system, I'm presented with a few different options. I can use the same modules or workflow-based segmentation to pull in my data, or even better, I can give AIP a prompt as to what it is that I'm trying to do and get recommendations from AIP on which tables I potentially need. I'm going to add now my problem statement to see if AIP can suggest something. Here, I'm gonna say, I want to find the inventory for my materials for the next quarter. Awesome. So without knowing much about what existed within SAP, I could get recommendations for a list of tables that matter to the use case I defined in natural language. Let me, for the sake of this demo, choose a subset of these tables and hit continue. As you can see, the various configurations options here take my raw SAP tables through a variety of optionally selectable steps so I can start to derive meaningful workflows from my data. For example, I'm able to denormalize my SAP data by joining the different object tables and the enrichment tables. I can ask it to rename raw SAP column names into more descriptive ones. For example, MNDT maps to client. I can generate descriptive names for newly created datasets, generate primary keys, foreign keys, and deduplicate rows, and also go through some data cleaning. All of this, and I can also directly sync this into the ontology. So let me do just that. Awesome. If I had to look at the end product on the data lineage tool, I can see that I was able to connect to my SAP source, ask HyperAuto to do a bunch of transformations on the raw tables that were pulled in, and then finally sync that into my ontology so that it could be used in end user applications, all of this within just a few minutes. Sweet. That's it for today, folks. I encourage you to try this out yourself at build.palantir.com. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more content. Thank you.